a faith, each and every one of us. Each and every one has been wired in such a way that we don't even need to go back to God. Okay. We don't need to go back to God to ask him to make me this or make me that. Hallelujah. Because from every facet, if we can deep, go deep into the creation of man, we will be discover that God has blessed in each and every man, each and every woman, each and every child. All that we need, according to the word of God, he said that what he has given us all that we need for godliness and what? Life. Praise God. And give us all that we have. We don't have planted several things we need in our life. What do we need to do then when we talk about it within them? We all need, what we need to do is what? To provoke. To provoke everyone to come up like that. Paul was telling Timothy, say, do not forsake that which your mother have implanted in you. Spread the Lord. So, invariably, if we look at the first Peter chapter 1, verse 3, that's why he placed that to us. God had given us all that we need to have in life. So, if we been, then means that we furnish and provide with whatever that the believer we're talking about need in order to accomplish that purpose. What we provide for them, what we give to them. We say that God has given everything. What then do we give to the believer? Is to encourage them to recognize that very gift that God has planted in the life. Because we are the one, the foreigners. So we have to be an exemplary to them. We want them and someone to define this equipment as well. Looking at your leader and aiming to follow and imitate him. Hallelujah. Follow him and it be certain to replicate whatever that he or she is doing in order to complete that purpose that God has given to us. The treatment is for you to accomplish that purpose. And this purpose should not be your own purpose. Praise God. And it should be the purpose that God has created in each one of us that comes in. Like I said, it was there from the day that we conceived. But God marked out what you and I would be ever before He allowed us to come to this earth. Praise God. Yeah. That the issue is that many people do not get there before time. So the need for you and I. To come in and equipping the believers is what? To ginger the effort so that each and everyone can be now alive with the purpose and the plan that God has given unto him or her. Praise the Lord. So being equipped allows God's grace to keep us focused on the purpose of the church of the believers who have been redeemed from their sins, for them to grow up into Christ's life, together with others. Again, a Christian believer is a biblical requirement. It is a biblical requirement according to Ephesians chapter 4. If you read, uh, hallelujah. If you read that through 11 to 12, it says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, and prophets, and some evangelists, and pastors, and teachers, equipping the saints for 
the work of ministry to build up the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. So Paul reminded believers that they are members of the Christ body. As we see in uh, Romans 12, verse 4 to 5. As well as in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 to 26. They belong to Christ and therefore to each order they have to be an instrument that God will use to accomplish that. Praise God. So we are also talking about in the same statement, we are talking about long-lasting successful ministry. Long-lasting successful ministry. Brethren, you see, most of the time, we find out that we have uh, people in the church. We devote our time to teach, to equip, to edify. The twist on is what they become after years in the church is really what matters. Praise God. Sometimes we look at it, many people think that it is the number of people you have in the church that is the issue that we want. No. It's what they become after leaving the church. And also, in most cases, I've discovered that we that God has called to equip these people and, ed and uh, uh, edify them. We do so. But after doing so, what next do we do? Because we are talking about long-lasting successful marriage. Sorry, uh, ministry. What do we do? How do we follow up with the believers? Many of the believers have things that bother them. Praise the Lord. And then we we'll know about this uh, parable of uh, the seed falling. Hallelujah. We have that very uh, statement that what? When the seed was planted, many fell on a fatal ground. Many fell on the roof. Many fell on the stone. Many fell on the thorn. And eventually, thorn was able to do what? Shook them. them out. It's not that the seed is not good. It's not that the seed is not productive. It's not that the seed cannot germinate. But because of the choke, because of the thorn, it is not possible for that seed to survive. Amen. For another interruption, you're going to continue. Um, we just got a call from Pastor Zad that the Board of Executives will be visiting us here. They are on your way uh, for the conversation. Could you ask whether he is part of it? Uh, so we might receive them from now going. And the point is, and any other logistics that uh, needs to be, how it's going to be. Uh, so, as I've announced, we're able to now. Amen. 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 Um, sorry for that interruption. I uh, think what we'll do is that uh, when they come, please, I would like somebody ready to accompany them. There's a, a filling station around here, in just about three minutes from here. Okay. They can pack, they are somebody bring them back. Or we can move them somehow. Okay. They can pack here. Okay. So somebody will bring them back. Okay. How many are coming? How many are coming? How many are coming? I don't know. How many of them are coming? Sure, they will come together. Yeah, that, that's the whole thing. Um, 
So what are we talking about is uh, concerning the lasting successful ministry. So what I'm saying, I'm saying that it would be fruitless for you and I as a minister, as a, a shepherd, to edify believers, to equip them. And then at the end of all our service, the believer does not become what we God expected, not what we expected, what God expected them to be. And I'm talking about what exactly could be the reason why that will not happen. And that is where we'll come, come to the conclusion that one of the them is that that believer might be choked by tongues in the world and also by things that he or she may not be able to control. And the question I ask in that is, how did the church, how did the shepherd come into line with this, with this? I mean, me, I come across, when I was thinking about this, I come across a book written by one Britain author. It's a leadership book. And I find a chapter in that book which they gave as what? As a guide. And in this chapter, we entitled it. We have not what else to So when I come up to this uh, very book, I was looking at it and I said, it might be of help if we can share and also consider what he is saying in this chapter as leaders and more especially as believers. We have gone through that and most of them are in a word of God, that's what I said. But what did he say? He said, I encourage you to scan your members' homeowners. I encourage you to scam your people always. However, as I say scam, many of us might be looking, ah, how do you scam your member? So everything has to do with scam is what? Negative. Praise the Lord. However, that is not exactly what he did. He used scam. <coughs> As a, a pathology for him, but rather he has come as a code. What he meant by scam, that is S C A P M, says S stands for sacrifice. 
C stands for celebration. A stands for appreciation. And F stands for mentor. The people can scam and uh, get people's mind off and get whatever they want to get off that person. You and I can use the same word in our own perspective to get into the life of the people we support. So then I want to add this question before we go. Kind of us here was appreciated this year, wherever you are. You were appreciated. That's appreciation, not necessarily, uh, thank you, we appreciate you, no. I mean, giving appreciation. Praise God. So I think I, did, I got one. Praise God. Oh. Of course, I'll say again, have celebrated one members this year. How many of us? Your members, the members of our church, how many of us have celebrated them? Praise the Lord. <laughs> so, how many of us? This is what we do. But most of the time, if it's not recognized, when we talk about sacrifice, the sacrifice we are talking about is not sacrifice of, oh, I am, you know, digging the Bible. I am trying to make sure that I educate them about the Bible. I am also trying to make sure that every one of them is spiritual and holy. That is not a sacrifice. Brethren, we need to really use the same thing that we are doing to make sure that we will obtain what we are desiring from them. And what is that? Let me just go on his word so that when I have to read it, we can, if possible, look at them. He says, it stands for sacrifice. This relates to giving back to your people or your members regularly without expecting to receive and doing anything unannounced. Do them unannounced. Leadership isn't a punch in and punch out position. It is a privilege. When you are sacrificed for your team, it gains that way coming. It gains loyalty and gain privilege. When we sacrifice ourselves to individual members of our church, the people I have the opportunity to lead do things because they care, not because they have to do it. Hallelujah. They care how do they come out with the mind of caring? The people you saw, they care for you. They look after you. It depends on how you pour yourself to them. It depends on how close you are to those things that are what? Bothering them. Hallelujah. How much are you buying in? into the affairs of their family. How much do you know? I am, I, sometimes I, I look at it and say, I don't know, people will begin to say that. But there was a time I, I begin to look at the, the church inside. I begin to ask myself, how is it that a church that have at least a thousand members will be there and a member of the church is going to sleep without his meal today. 
that be possible? Is it being found in our churches today? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. And a member is there. From what we learned from uh, the time of apostle, what did it say? Among them, there was what? None of them walking. Why would they not improve it? But most of them, what would they rely upon, people of God, is on we are sitting the Bible. How much are we acting on the Bible? I've seen a church that want to have branches, okay? And they have a modern church who is wealthy. And the pastor is sent somewhere to open a church. In the church, the pastor is alone to suffer in order to open a church. Tell me, how much yes, the pastor is a commitment? You have to do it, correct? But you are not better in it. If you are such a person, from what we are learning from the the church must be there for the members. We are not there because only for their spiritual being, their spiritual life. Is good. That is the first. But the second is what? Yeah, it's cool. Emotional. Yeah, monitor. You know, can we be? Because if they are not well in their body, their spirit will not accommodate. Because the spirit is living as body. Praise the Lord. So I cannot see us as believers, as ministers, looking at their members, you are not even aware of what they are going through in their life. You don't even ask them how things are going. You know? I can tell you for sure that it is one of the core of our calling. The core of because your equipment and your edification, he says what? Yeah, being a part of that person's life. We sacrifice most of the time, yes. But what the Bible is what is saying here is that our sacrifice does not mean that what we become the savior. Hallelujah. We cannot be another savior. Meaning what? Praise the Lord. We cannot be another savior. Meaning what? We are not going to die for them. Jesus has already died for them. Praise the Lord. But we have to be in the soul of their life. Knowing about their welfare. Hallelujah. Appreciating that. So the next thing we would say is that we have to what? Celebrate. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. And more especially, as you sacrifice, you look at those people that have the core of your what? Mission. And you carry it on their head. Praise God. There's people that don't even care what goes on in the church. But at least begin with them that walk. Care to make sure that your mission, your calling, make meaning. If they are doing that to you, you are telling them, go here and they go. Do that, they do. You come here and do. We have them today, they are there. Try to find out what is happening going on. Their own life. 
But when you were talking about building, when you build them, you build you. I have this example of somebody that wants to build a church. And he wants to build a church. What does he do? See, he come up with this saying that what? It is good when you want to build a church. Remember that the what you are building is the people. Hallelujah. When you build the people, the people will build the church. But when your focus is how to get my uh, uh, calling and how to get my vision, how to do and become a this, and you don't focus on the people. It doesn't matter how you define them. It doesn't matter how you equip them. They will leave you. Praise God. Let, and like we say, it is a relationship. Christianity is what? A relationship. We are family. Whatever you can do to your son, your daughter, is the same thing you can do to your members. If you want your daughter and your to wear good things and you see a member going on right, brother and sister, and you leave them, remember what Jesus said. He was naked, but what? He did not clothe with him. That came, that came out. I was sick. He did not visit me. You know. I was homeless. Did not. It's our responsibility to be part and parcel of our members' life. What is being said? I said celebrating them. Like my, I heard that someone say, we celebrate their birthday. No. You celebrate their birthday, that is their birthday. Celebrate them because of what? Their impact in the church. Recognize them, what they do for the church. Not when it is their birthday. It should be church responsibility to map out with their that time. To say, yes, it is good for us to recognize, celebrate together because of what? Our achievement. Because of what? Our commitment. Because of what? Our zeal to serve the Lord, more especially in this ministry. This encourages the members to, to know and say, yes, I think what I am doing in the church is being what? Fulfilled. Praise God. Hallelujah. In fair to bar, one time, can they give us this example? So, a member of my church come up and say, Pastor, this is what is bothering me. I said, what is bothering you, sister? He said, I am committed to the church. I am doing every other thing I'm doing. I often say, one day you meet me, I want to treat me and say, Pastor, He's saying thank you for doing this and doing that and doing that. That brings me so much and put me down for the whole week. Some people want you not even asking for you to give them to them just for acknowledging them. And more especially before the program is very, very essential. Program. <clears throat> We're talking about long lasting successful ministry. For the ministry to be long and successful, you need men. We cannot work without men. We cannot be successful without them. Hallelujah. 
in the world, they cannot last without maintaining those you pour your life to, having them with you. Amen. So, I say about appreciation, mentoring with mentor people day and night. Also, our mentoring should also go to their own, like I said earlier, discovering their own gift. Write and discover what gift is in a person. Encourage them based on that gift. Equip them based on that gift. I found this, I found it becoming closer to my destiny. I found this uh, minister who had his members. Somebody said, I think this church, there's something wrong here. And the pastor said, what is it that is wrong? He said, when you look at the look of this church, It seems as if it's not in the right position. You know, when you look at the wall, look at the decoration, and everything you see. Pastor said, what can we do? Say, if I have the ability, I have a vision to be able to put this very environment in such a way that whosoever that comes in we say wow so starts looking at me i'm saying what can we do to help you attend to that very confusion in you you know, before someone can be able to do what I'm telling you, he need to be trained. And the pastor said, why can't you go for that training? He said, I have the energy to do it, but what? I have not the way with that. Yeah. The pastor said, that is not the problem. If it is to get you to that very place, your problem. We are ready to do that. And off he will. The job take over the training. By the time he finishes the training, where does he return? Praise God. And do you know what? Like I said earlier, this very man devoted one year of his first salary to renovate the church. It was the first thing that they came to was his training. Now the church has equipped him spiritually. They have equipped him physically, materially. Now he is on his own. He can take care of his family. He can also contribute to the church. And what do you think he will be to the outsiders? It will be an example, loud and true. Everybody that sees him. He can never write his history without the name of the church. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, brethren, what are we talking about here? Sacrificing ourselves to our members, celebrating them for what they do, appreciating them, more especially when they are committed to the call, to the mission of the church, and also mentoring them all around. Will help whosoever comes out of that very mission. 
to live long in the ministry, to be long in that ministry, to be a pure man and so. And when he goes out of that ministry, whatever he had bought from you and I, would that help him to continue in his own ministry? And you know that that is the way you do in this ministry. When he goes over there, that is the line he went to to be in other ministry. So we must be open to our brothers. We must be open to our ministers. We must be in their life. Not only God's mind, but their physical life, their mental life, their marital life, all around them. The church should be part of it. For us to be able to bring out or produce believers that will have a long lasting successful marriage. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for how far God has brought us. Once again, another crop of offering to the Lord to the um We thank God we have heard what we ought to do as believers. And I think all what Apostle has said, we can uh, see it in the, the book of Third John verse 2, right? The beloved, I wish above all things that ye may hold prosper and be good with as our soul prosper. And generally, the church, we most of, most of the time focus on only the soul, 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 without looking at the other two. May the Lord help us to be a balanced ministers in Jesus' name. Amen. So we, we will use the scam, sacrifice celebrate, appreciate and uh, mentor it without scamming them in the Hebrew way. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And uh, what Apostle said, because uh, of our time, I'll just say a few things like, it's true, if you look at Muslims and this church, uh, uh, Latter-day Saints, so they do their own evangelism, but they focus on their members a lot. They will provide all what you need, all what we need. But we uh, we keep up easily because people also take advantage of us. Uh, yeah, because I know even within our church, a lot of people that came to the United States, as soon as they come here, they become deeper life members. When they get your feet, some of them, I remember where I used to be in Massachusetts. Yeah, but okay, we took them to CNA school. They got their certificate, and some of them will come and lie down in front and sit and do my soul food for them to enter. As soon as they begin to get their feet, that's it. <laughs> so it also will uh, give some discouragement. But at the end of the day, what the learn is we shouldn't look at what we do. Yes, because even in the disciples, there's always Judas that will come on the way. So we should overlook at Judas and look at the John and the Peters that will make the church stand and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So Muslims in this country, for example, what they do is they ensure that they go to the um, the, uh, the prisons and they've been pumping them with everything they need. So when they come out of prison, they say, I'm a Muslim. And the funny thing they tell them is that it, it tells them that Christianity is not for you. Your grandparents, their religion is Muslim, Islamic, which is lie. Because all these religions came from outside. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. But which is Christ is the main person that we need to focus on. So God will help us balance it and act on it so that we will use the acronym of SCAN to do the well-being of our members. May the Lord give us grace to do it in Jesus' name. Amen. So once again, we thank you, the Son of God bless. Thank you. Thank you.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ah, is he here? Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know. So uh, we thank Almighty God. We will, I guess we will move on to the next um, point, and that is the uh, A M F U S H I N and N U S H I N. So I will uh, read it quick. AMF, we have a mission, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Working together for the kingdom of God. The AMF African Ministers Fellowship is non governmental interdominational organization formed to reach out to all African descent Christian ministers in the Washington metropolitan area. The body may be African, African in origin, but this fellowship meetings have been attended by people of various nationalities. The inter interdominationality of AMF makes it unique. In heaven, there are no um, denominations. Thanks to God for the ministers on mission building together for the kingdom of God. The fellowship is formed for the purpose of, among other things, to commit ourselves to getting people through into a deeper relationship with God. To again exist as as exalt our God always, and then as we continue to evangelize our communities, and uh, to also edify and equip the believers for a long lasting successful ministry, to bring people to a point of realization, restoration, relationship with God and the Lord Jesus Christ. We continue. To support our lips, lift up and encourage one another as we run the Christian race. To help one another in building a strong evangelism team, music ministry, supporting various other churches program, empowering our members and improving their skills through seminars and worship. To embark on joint evangelistic outreach and create awareness of the necessary tools for the church growth. We believe if different nations could come together under the umbrella of the United States, United, United Nations, despite their religion, religious, political, cultural, social, and language differences, the Christian body under the leadership of various appointed, anointed, and God-approved ministers should be able to work together despite our denominational difference. Hallelujah. Amen. Pardon me. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I don't like her, but we, we are growing. Amen. Hallelujah. Wait, so that is the mission. Praise the Lord. We thank Almighty uh, God. So at this point, I think we go ahead and uh, go ahead to our um, announcement. So what we have here as issue are procedure for inclusion of announcement in bulletin. In bulletin, sorry. So announcements are to be forwarded to AOF Secretary. I think the email address is the Hallelujah. Our Lady right the Hallelujah. So um, we let me uh, uh, note that. And then we would like also all of us to know the uh, Deeper Life Convention that is coming on October 17 to 20. Hallelujah. So we want to we want people to know we yeah, are reminded. And then the third one also is about our gifts, $50 per mother check, and then um, 25 um dollars per the branch. Hallelujah. So we thank Almighty God. If there are any more announcements, our 
President will let us know. At this point, we will stand and whatever that we have brought as offering, you know, we will uh, lift our offering up as we pray over our offering. We are praying. Father, we thank you. We bless your name for the token you have given us. We pray that you sanctify and accept it for your work. Father, wherever the money is coming from, you will multiply it, Lord God, for your work. And those who do not have, those will be open for them so that in our next meeting, we will have, they will have some to give to glorify your name. Bless us all together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, praise the Lord. Let me also announce this. Hallelujah. Kelvin Project and Raise, Raise the Lord uh, is being organized by our church, hosting church, that's the Holy Ghost International Revival Ministry. Praise the Lord over here. Hallelujah. It's a Kelvin Project Raising Service, and the date is November 17th. Hallelujah. Let us keep the date. The date again, November 17th. Hallelujah. You know, let us all come together, remember the date, and come and support. Hallelujah. If there are any more announcements, we will, we will know. Thank you. Uh, I have some information from the AMF Advanced Planning Committee. We had a meeting. We meet. We had a meeting on Thursday. We have now had meetings three times, and we had one on Thursday this week. So the anniversary of the AMF is coming up on the fifth of December. And so, a lot of things have been planned. You know, on that day, by the grace of God, all the chapters are going to meet. Uh, at December? Okay. Today on the 5th of December. So, they, have, they told us that we must be preparing every branch to be preparing for the anniversary and we must encourage our church members you know to attend and right now the flyers are on the platform the AMF platform that the parents uh, body platform and they want us to uh, send out the information I mean, invitation to as many people as would like to attain the anniversary. And also the ones from our branch here in Virginia, people that can help in decorating the place, you know, and some other things they will be involved in to do during the anniversary, before the anniversary. And also, if people would like to really advertise on the program, special events, or whatever, the ones is uh, the ones uh, the one is items we compiled now. And by the grace of God, the chairman is working very hard. That whatever information you have. You can send it to uh, the platform. So we want our people to cooperate, every one of us to cooperate and to participate. So we encourage our people, please. 
we have some amount of time now. So let us uh, have it at the back of our mind that indeed this adversity is coming up and that we must be fully involved. And that is what some of the information I have to pass across to us. We are aware that this adversity is coming up. Thank you very much.